reaction we're going to discuss when talking about alkyl halide synthesis <clears throat> is the substitution reaction on tertiary alcohols. We mentioned how we needed to make the OH on primary and secondary alcohols a better leaving group through reaction with SSCl2 or PBr3. And we had mentioned that <clears throat> that doesn't those reactions don't really work very well with tertiary alcohols because of the steric hindrance on the alpha carbon of tertiary alcohols. However, there's an alternative mechanism for substitution which works really, really well. It's very easy. And that's just treating tertiary alcohols with the appropriate acid, HBr or HCl, depending on which halide we want um, to substitute for. So let's look at one of these reactions. Here's the one from the PowerPoint slides. We've got a tertiary alcohol here. Again, here's the alpha carbon, the one directly bound to the functional group, and it's tertiary. We're just going to add hydrochloric acid and we get a, a nice substitution where the chlorine has substituted for the OH and we have water as a secondary product there. Now, how does this work? Now, I would like it if you would pause this video right now and just try to come up with your own mechanism for how this reaction would work. Um, with the hint that acids will act as acids. So try to have hydrochloric acid act as an acid. Okay, if you restarted the video or totally ignored me, now we can talk a little bit about the mechanism of this reaction. Let's maybe draw it um, a little smaller so that I can fit everything in here. Whoops. Not do that. Let's have a little pen here. Um, so let's draw our tertiary alcohol. We've got one methyl cyclohexanol, and let's put the methyl. Let's give it a little bit of potential stereochemistry. It really isn't any because this is symmetrical. OH. Okay. Now we're going to treat this with hydrochloric acid, and my hint to find this mechanism was that the acid's going to act as an acid. So it's going to protonate this alcohol. Where's it going to protonate it? Well, the most obvious place. It's going to protonate it at the alcohol group. Remember when we draw arrows for acids and bases, our Lewis base is the source of electrons which will form a bond with the hydrogen. Okay, so the first step in this substitution reaction is the protonation of our alcohol. Let's keep that methyl there. And this has solved a problem that we had. We said our OH was a bad leaving group. That's a positive charge there. But we've turned that OH into H2O through protonation with an acid. And H2O is a good leaving group. It's just water. Okay? And in fact, it will just leave. It will leave as water. So how can we draw the mechanism of this thing leaving? Well, it's going to break the bond between oxygen and our carbon ring here. And so these electrons are going to just jump onto the oxygen to form water as our leaving group. Now it's not charged, right? We lost the positive charge on the oxygen anyway. We still have our chloride. Nothing happened to it. And what else is going on here? Well, we didn't just, this positive charge didn't just disappear, right? These electrons that were shared between the alpha carbon and the oxygen have jumped onto the oxygen, making it not be positively charged. But now this carbon is sort of left out in the cold. It only has three bonds. And we know that carbons with only three bonds are carbocations. Now, so far, does this seem like a reasonable mechanism 
Well, it seems like hydrochloric acid should act as an acid. It's a strong acid. Water has a product. That seems reasonable. And leaving behind a carbocation intermediate sometimes is reasonable, sometimes isn't. In this case, it should look pretty good because this is not only a carbocation intermediate, it's a tertiary carbocation, and we think those are very stable. Now, once we've gotten to this point, we have um, the rest of this is it's pretty easy. We've got a negative charge here and a positive charge here. This chloride will attack the carbocation, quenching it to form our final substituted product. Okay, now let's think before I draw this final product about the stereochemistry of this. With these reactions, we said the attack of the chloride or the bromide in the second part of the reaction had to be an anti, had to attack that alpha carbon on the opposite side of the leaving group. Do we have that same issue with this reaction? Well, what is the shape of this carbocation intermediate? This carbon only has three bonds associated with it only has three electron domains, and so its shape is trigonal planar. I shouldn't have drawn this as a wedge. Really, this is a trigonal plane, and that chloride can attack that carbocation from either the top or the bottom. So we don't see an inversion of stereochemistry with these reactions. We're not attacking from the backside and, and flipping the stereochemistry. Here, if we had any stereochemistry to start with, we're going to randomize it because we're forming a carbocation without any stereochemistry at all. It's just planar. It has no three-dimensional character at all. And the chloride can attack from either side and will do so randomly. And so we do not see an inversion of stereochemistry with these substitution reactions. Oops. When the chloride comes in, It can attack from the bottom or it can attack from the top. In this molecule, since there's symmetry in the ring, it doesn't matter whether the methyl group is down here or the methyl group is up here. They're both the same molecule. But it's important to think about the mechanisms of these two and their consequences on the stereochemistry of the product. For primary and secondary alcohols, where the bromide or chloride is attacking from the opposite side of the alpha carbon than the leaving group, we see an inversion of stereochemistry with um, hydrochloric acid or hydrobromic acid on tertiary alcohols, where we generate this non-stereochemically active carbocation intermediate, we see a randomization of stereochemistry. Randomization. Randomization. And often that results in a racemic mixture if we have some interesting stereochemistry going on. It's more often that we do have stereochemistry with tertiary alcohols because we can have interesting substituents off of that carbon. Primary, no. We don't have a primary alcohol that has stereochemistry. Secondary, it's possible.